Is the Reserve Bank of Australia at risk of over-tightening along with other central banks around the world with their monetary policy? Well, Citibank's global strategist Matt King says it's a risky business for central banks as it appears that they're predisposed to commit a major policy error. The strategist said that almost all movements in equities and credit could be explained by the movements in the central bank's balance sheet and central banks are committed to defeat inflation but they're actually guided by faulty models and faulty thinking let's have a look here we can see the tightening process in their balance sheets is something that the central banks have been focused on through quantitative easing and quantitative tightening. Well, let's talk about what quantitative easing is, which was happening during um, the COVID pandemic. A lot of the central banks were doing quantitative easing, which is a form of monetary policy where central banks purchase securities in an open market to achieve a desired outcome. Quantitative tightening is the opposite of that, is where they stop purchasing securities. If you find these videos useful, hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things property and finance. So where we look at the Reserve Bank's uh, quantitative easing program, which has now moved to quantitative tightening, uh, we can see how the central bank's balance sheets looked like back during when COVID happened. Really, a lot of the government bonds were minimal. And then at one time, all the central banks around the world in really a synchronized uh, sort of effort started to buy up assets. And we can see here how the central bank's balance sheets skyrocket up overnight and in more recent times, how they're starting to come down. Now that was done through a myriad of securities. We can see a lot of these bonds were purchased and they had uh, you know three years, 10 years, five years. So they'll be coming up for maturity soon. And we can see when they're going to be maturing a lot coming up in 2024, 2023, and 2025. And we can see that over a long period of time. So this is something that has been happening. There's a, a number of coming in 2023. There's a strong likelihood that they're actually going to end up over tightening, according to Mr. Kim. He mentioned that It'll end up driving the financial markets down and creating a deeper recession than was actually necessary. Mr. King has tracked the movements in the share market relative to the changes in the central bank's reserve holdings and the fluctuation through quantitative easing now to quantitative tightening. He mentioned that the sharp decline through quantitative tightening is a dominant driving factor in equity market sell-off. And he finds it absolutely remarkable how well his stupid quantitative easing chart continues to do at mirroring the market movement. So what he's saying here is that with the government's purchasing through quantitative easing, now their sell-off through quantitative tightening, how the markets are so closely mirrored to what these um, tightening effects are doing to the market. He mentions that central banks will lift rates and drain trillions of dollars in liquidity from financial systems via quantitative tightening and it'll force everything to get swamped. And the broad conclusion is that central banks are going to remove the liquidity through quantitative tightening because they're so worried about inflation and we've heard the Reserve Bank talk about inflation wanting to get it back in that key bandwidth. They're aiming for the 2 to 3% mark. Um, once again, it's currently at 6.1, likely to peak next year, closer to in the high sevens. And uh, the Reserve Bank is hell-bent on getting this back down, along with every other central bank across the world. Now, central banks aren't going to stop. They're just going to ignore asset prices, which they did when we had super low inflation. We saw asset flight, um, prices inflate quite quickly. And now they're going to do the same. They're going to ignore asset prices prices as they deflate with inflationary pressure. So all we need to look at was property prices and where they got to during COVID. We saw 20, 30% increases and the Reserve Bank did nothing with the cash rate. There was the, um, during that period of 2021, 2020, when prices were going through the roof, they didn't really do anything to the cash rate because they were happy with where inflation went. And now the same is gonna occur here where asset prices may start to tank. The Reserve Bank is only focused on one thing, which is getting inflation under control. And that's what Mr. King's talking about here. The central banks aren't gonna stop at anything until they bring inflation back under control. Now, what 
we risk is that there might be a strong uh, possibility and probability that the world economy will stumble into a recession in the next few months. And the effect really comes as we talked about quantitative easing ending, the absence of financial um, uh, stimulus, and this sobering effect of a series of hefty rate rises. We can see here in Australia and across the world, it's very similar sort of outcome. We've seen six rate rises in as many months, 2.5% since May this year. And what that's going to do is potentially spark increasing out, um, gloomy outlooks for the world economy. And the policy, which is tightening, due to a 40-year high inflation, has sparked debates between central bankers as to how high rates need to get to, which is a very explosive topic for both markets and policyholders alike. I don't think anyone really knows the answer to this. It's going to be one of those things we'll have to watch and see, see how this plays out. But we know until inflation is back under control, the central banks across the world are going to keep raising rates to get that back under wraps. They're expecting inflation to peak next year. So they're saying that it's going to peak. And what's a good thing that we have seen in Australia is that from October the 26th, the ABS will be commencing publication of CPI, so inflationary data, every month. Previously, we only, even the Reserve Bank was only getting this data every quarter. So we're going to see at the moment 6.1 expected to keep going up. We're going to be able to get a better grasp on where rates are going to be. We have heard about the lag effect with interest rates. When the cash rate goes up, there is a lag effect. They say it's about three months between it actually hitting uh, borrower's back pockets and having an effect on things like inflation because the whole idea with increasing the cash rate means that there's less cash for you know, mums and dads, borrowers that have mortgages to spend in the marketplace or um, for general goods and services, which then means people are spending less, which should bring inflation down. Now, also going on, Australia is going to be impacted by any global recession that goes without saying. But one thing that is expected is that effectively we're going to see weakening in the domestic economy and the Reserve Bank needs to consider potentially holding back on delivering monetary policy tightening to avoid a self-imposed recession. Now, I think this is a tough one to get right because if other countries like the United States continues to increase, the Fed continues to increase their cash rate, Australia might not have a choice but to follow suit because they've got to be careful with things like the Australian dollar against the US. If that goes down, we're going to have further inflationary pressures because it's costing more to bring goods in. So it's going to be a really delicate balancing act the Reserve Bank has to do here. And it might be really coming down to what other central banks around the world do. Now, the issue uh, around the, the world is where we're going to see peak inflation. Now, it's widely expected we'll see that peak inflation coming through maybe early 2023 and then inflation to come back down throughout 2023 onwards and a recession could completely undermine the demand and compound the decline in inflation. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think it's one of those situations where we watch and see. Here at Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers. We're uh, based in Australia, deal with people Australia-wide. So if you're looking for assistance with a mortgage, we can help. Simply visit our website, huntergalloway.com.au. Click that free assessment button, fill in the details. We'll give you a buzz and take care of all the information and in your situation. Uh, call us on 1300 08 065. We can discuss your situation, whether it be looking to refinance, looking to buy your first home, upgrade, downgrade, get an investment. We can talk about your strategy, formulate some solutions. And as I said, there's zero cost. So if you're living in Australia, looking for a great mortgage broker, we can help get in touch.